Hello everyone, welcome to VLSI Chaps YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about sand to silicon, the fascinating world of semiconductor. We don't need to tell you that modern digital devices like smartphones, PCs, gaming consoles and more are powerful pieces of technology. Much of this power comes from microchips, but recent chip shortage tools, we can't get enough of them. In 2020, more than 1 trillion chips were manufactured around the world, that is about 130 chips for every person on earth. To make any chip, numerous processes play a role. Let us discuss semiconductor manufacturing step by step. This is the raw material for such a revolutionary product, sand. More than 90% of the earth crust is composed of silica, silicon dioxide or silicate. Next to oxygen, silicon is most abundant element on earth's crust. When sand glitters in sunlight, that is silica. For the purpose of VLSI or silicon chip, Silicon required should be monocrystalline with precise uniform chemical characteristics. With carefully selected pure sand, 98% pure or better silicon is obtained by chemical process of reduction. Removal of oxygen from sand, however this is not enough. Using highly complex chemical and mechanical processes, this is further purified to bring impurities below the parts per billion level. Nowadays, a high level of purity is approximately 99.99% has been attained. This purified silicon is in the shape of cylindrical ingot, having perfect monocrystalline structure, having same crystal orientation, using a highly precision saw, this ingot is cut into wafer. Today almost all the electronic chips are made on silicon wafer. Silicon wafer when converted to semiconductor chips or also called integrated circuits contains numerous electrical pathways which connect thousands or even millions of transistors and other electronics components. These transistors store information on the semiconductor either by holding an electric charge or by holding little or no charge. Although the complete fabrication process is highly complex in nature, one can attempt to divide in these following steps. Silicon wafer is heated in an oxygen rich furnace so that a layer of silicon oxide is formed on the top of the surface of paper. A thin coating of photographic emulsion is applied over the oxidized surface of paper. This is followed by a dry and backstage so that the photographic emulsion is also known as photoresist become hardened. Then, For better performance of transistor, the ideal solution would be increase the dielectric constant K of the material. A higher dielectric material is used for better performance of transistor. High dielectric stands for high, high K it stands for high dielectric material or constant. A measure of how much change a material can hold. L is the reference point for this constant and has a K of 1.0. Silicon dioxide has a K of 3.9. High K materials such as hafnium dioxide, zirconium dioxide and titanium dioxide have K values higher than 3.9. At this stage, VLSI design input is used to make optical mask. Fundamental building block of VLSI design is a transistor. This optical mask can be thought of as a stencil having transparent and opaque region that define the doping region to build a transistor as shown in figure. Connecting roots 
क्रॉस कनेक्शन एक्सेट्रा डिपेंडिंग अपन सर्किट डिजाइन देर कुड बी टेन टू ट्वेंटी फोटो मास्क टू बी यूज थ्रू अ चेन प्रोसेस Optical reticle is generated, which is further process to generate working photo mask. This mask are used in wafer fabrication for selective etching of silicon wafer. Photo mask is aligned with the wafer and is exposed to light so that photo resist surface of the wafer get selectively exposed as per photo mask design. Like washing off of photo resist uh, on the silicon uh, on the on the silicon wafer, a highly sophisticated chemical process is selectively etches the surface of the wafer, leaving behind the parts that are masked by the resist material. When the required etch depth is achieved by the wafer, is stripped of the resist and washed clean. This process is repeated for successive masking layers typically 10 to 20 times for a CMOS process. Since the complete integrated circuit is made up of the transistors, now the transistors have to be formed on the silicon wafer. This is achieved by a process known as doping or electroplating. By doping this the conduction resistance of the silicon wafer is modified so that transistor can be formed in order to produce a functional circuit the transistor formed by doping are to be interconnected and this is achieved by depositing fine wire trusses made from aluminum or copper to connect up the transistors in a correct way this proceed wafers goes for testing as per the test program where each die on a wafer is probed and marked as good or bad bad die the wafer is stripped and broken into dies good dies go for packaging good dies are packaged as per the packaging requirement Thank you so much for watching. I am going to posting such videos. So if you want to continue gain knowledge from us, just subscribe our channel by pressing button below. If you have any doubts about this video, then comment us below. If you found our video interesting or informative, then like, share, and comment. Thank you.